Hello and welcome to the session on solid figures. Hi, I am Ravi and my Twitter handle is at the rate Ravi Handa. You can use that to provide feedback. Now, to begin with, we look at some of the standard figures, which are the cube, the cuboid, the cylinder, the cone, the sphere and the hemisphere. Now, to remember, some of the important formulas are for the volume, the total surface area and the lateral or the curved surface area wherever it is applicable. Now in case of a cube, you have all the six faces which are equal to each other, all sides are equal and the volume is given by side cube. The surface area however, for each side it is side square. So the total surface area is six times side square. The lateral surface area, you will not have the base in the top. For the four sides, it will become four side square. For a cuboid, the volume is length into breadth into height. The surface area total is twice of LB plus twice of LH plus twice of BH. Why is it so? Well, simply because there will be two faces which have L into B. There will be two faces which will have L into H and there will be two faces which will have B into H or the breadth into the height. The curved, the lateral surface area, if you want to consider it, you remove the floor and you remove the ceiling. You only have the walls left, so to say, and the walls will be, two walls will be length into height and two walls will be breadth into height. So the lateral surface area will be twice of that value. In a cylinder, the volume is given by pi r square into h. Pi r square is the area of the base, that into the height. The total surface area is 2 pi r square plus 2 pi r h, which can also be written as 2 pi r into r plus h. Now, if you think about it, how you got this, well, area of the circle at the bottom is pi r square. Area of the circle at the top is again pi r square, which becomes 2 pi r square and the lateral surface area is 2 pi r h. How do you determine that? Think of it as a cylinder which you are cutting open. Then if you have flattened out the cylinder, you will get a rectangle. The height of the rectangle is going to be h units, whereas the length of the rectangle will be the circumference of the circle at the bottom, which was 2 pi r and hence the lateral or the, hence the curved surface area in this case becomes 2 pi r h. The cone being a very similar figure, Volume is one third of area of base pi r square into h. The total surface area pi r square for the base and pi r l for the lateral surface area. In case of a sphere, the volume is given by 4 by 3 pi r cube. Hemisphere is half of that. So the volume becomes 2 by 3 pi r cube. The total surface area is 4 pi r square. In case of a hemisphere, it should be half or 2 pi r square, but it is actually 3 pi r square. Think about it. Why is it so? Well, in case of a hemisphere, you get an additional circle at the top. When you imagine a sphere and you cut it into two parts, what will happen is, think of an apple. When you cut, what happens is you get that white surface. That white surface is essentially going to be a circle of area pi r square. And that is why you get 2 pi r square plus pi r square or 3 pi r square here. In this case, the I don't know what to call the curved surface area because the entire thing is curved. So you can call it 4 pi r square. In case of a hemisphere, if you remove the circle at the top, that can be considered as the curved surface area, which is 2 pi r square. Another important funda to note is that there will be four body diagonals in a cube, also in a cuboid. In a cube, the body diagonals will be root 3 times the side, whereas in a cuboid, they will be root of L square plus B square plus H square. Moving on to some special figures such as a frustum. A frustum is nothing else but a truncated cone. You can imagine a cone and if you cut a cone with a plane parallel to the circular base, the remaining figure which you can see here is known as a frustum. Now what all will it have? If you want to find out the volume, one way of finding out the volume is you consider the volume of the entire cone, let's say extending it, extending it to something like this. From that, you remove the area of the small cone, which 
will come out as if you remember the formula for volume of the cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h very similarly you can remember for the volume of a frustum also 1 by 3 pi h is common now instead of r square you have two radii here the big radius capital r and the small radius small r so it will be capital r square plus small r square plus product of r r for the lateral surface area once again you can do a lateral surface area of the big cone minus lateral surface area of the small cone at the top or you can do pi r l now instead of the radius you will have capital r plus small r here for the total surface area you already have the lateral surface area as pi times r plus r into l what will you add in it you will add a small pi r square at the top and you will add a small pi r square or a pi capital r square at the bottom for the circle at the top and for the circle at the bottom respectively now in case of a prism first of all we need to understand what is a prism a prism is a figure which you will get if you have a polygon projected or falling through a particular space let's say i have a triangle d e f if it falls through space and becomes a c b then the entire portion which i get is a prism now instead of a triangle it could have been a square it could have been a rectangle it could have been an octagon if it was an octagon it would have been an octagonal prism if it was a rectangle it would have been a rectangular prism a rectangular prism is actually not much different from a cuboid but that is the idea now one thing which comes in handy in such cases is that a solid with a rectangular vertical face and basis one thing which comes in handy in case of a prism is how many vertices will it have let's say if you imagine a polygon at the top it will have n vertices at the top n vertices at the bottom that is the reason why it will have 2n vertices how many faces it will have one face at the top the polygon one face at the bottom the projection of the polygon and n lateral faces for each of the sides or it will have n plus two faces sides well n sides at the bottom n sides at the top and the n connectors so it will have a total of three n sides or edges the lateral surface area is very simply the perimeter of the base into the height volume is area of the base into the height and the total surface area is perimeter of the base into the height was the lateral surface area at the area of the top and the area of the base which is simply twice the area of area of the base and that gives you the total surface area moving on to pyramids well a pyramid is when you have a polygon at the base and it is being connected to one particular point over the top which is known as the apex and that point will be directly above the center of the base so let's say o was my center of the base it is directly above it o a in this case will be the height d e b e c b c d all these are the edges also the edges are a b a c a e and a d so first of all how many edges will be there n at the bottom and the n connectors so this will have two n edges how many faces will it have it has n lateral faces one face at the bottom so it will have n plus one faces how many vertices will it have n vertices at the bottom one vertex at the top the apex so it will have n plus one vertices actually there is a very interesting identity known as the euler's identity the Euler's identity can be used to predict the number of faces, vertices and edges. It is faces plus vertices is equal to edges plus 2. This is something that can come in handy and can come in useful. Now, for such a pyramid, you can see what will be the total surface area. It will have the area of the base, very obviously. What are these figures? The sides. The sides are all triangles so if you can figure out the slant height which you can which will be the same only in case if the polygon at the bottom is a regular polygon it will be half into the perimeter into the 
slant height. That will be the lateral surface area. If you add the area of the base to it, you will get the total surface area. The volume is going to be one third of the area of the base into the height. Now, let us go back to the original sheet which I had. What is a cone? A cone is nothing else but a pyramid. So one third area of the base pi r square into the height is the volume. And cylinder is what? Cylinder is a prism. So pi r square the area of the base into the h which is the height. To end I would like to give you couple of special ideas which have been asked in questions before. One is that let's say if you are trying to inscribe a cube of side A. If you are trying to inscribe a sphere inside a cube of side A, the radius will be A by 2 because then the sphere will touch the sides of the cube. However, if it is the other way around that you are trying to inscribe a cube inside of a sphere, then what will happen? The radius, well, what will be the body diagonal? The body diagonal of the cube will become the diameter. Body diagonal of the cube is root 3a, that is the diameter. So radius of the sphere will be root 3a by 2. Now let's say if you are trying to inscribe a sphere in a cylinder of radius a and height h, then what will be the radius? It is actually very difficult to predict. It will depend upon what is the limiting factor. If the radius becomes the limiting factor, then r will be equal to a, whereas if the height becomes the limiting factor, then the radius will be half of the height. With this, i like to wrap up the session on solids. Please provide feedback via Twitter at my Twitter handle, which is at the rate Ravi Handa. You can also email me on my mail ID, which is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you.